Thank you for listening to the podcast. Thank you for watching it. Thank you for buying my shoes, Puma Ron Funches, over at Footlocker.com. Thank you for come seeing me on the road in Chicago, Illinois is coming up, as well as San Francisco, California. I will be in a new gig, Las Vegas, Nevada. Come and see me at the Wise Guys Comedy Club there, October 17th and 18th. I believe those are the dates. But you know me, who I, who I be. You got to go check ronfunches.com. Uh, but if you live in Chicago, San Francisco, or Las Vegas, go to ronfunches.com. Go get yourself some tickets. Also, I'll be um, in La Brea, at the La Brea Improv, if you're here in California. And I'll um, be ending the year up the Thanksgiving weekend in San Diego at the American Comedy Club. So if you're here in town for this uh, Thanksgiving weekend, you're going to want to get away from your family, uh, come and see me and my friends who I can get to come. I'm going to guess not Blair because she'll probably be with her family. Uh, but we'll, <laughs> we'll see who can come. Uh, see you there. Now let's get to the show. Hi, it's me. It's Ron. Thank you. Hi, how are you? I hope you're feeling strong. I hope you're feeling brave. Oh, and I hope you're feeling loved and you're grateful for that love. I'm so grateful for all the love that I received this last week. Going back to Portland, Oregon, the place that I started comedy. Uh, seeing so many friends that I knew uh, from the beginning of my comedy career. Some of the comedians there. Uh, some people who I knew from even before I started comedy. Had some of my high school classmates come out. Like Nicole and Emily. So good to see you guys. Thank you so much, Nicole. I don't know you also listen to the pod. So the double shout out for you. Um, <laughs> and it was just exactly what I needed. Especially while going through everything. Separation. Going through um, re- focusing myself and my life to get back to people who were proud of me because of the things that I accomplished, not that they, no one was jealous of me, no one uh, wanted what I have. It's people who genuinely love me and care for me and are proud of me and want the best for me. And that was beautiful, um, including having lunch with my friend Lauren, who um, is just a, a, is one of those friends you want to have that tells you the truth, tells you what they see in you and tells you and listens to your troubles. And to be and normally our relationship is that I listen to her troubles and tell her uh, some a student advice for her to follow that takes one to two years for her to listen to. But then she does. Um, and in return, she got, she got me real hard. This, <laughs> this last time where she was just like, man, uh, you know, not to get into specifics because I probably shouldn't, but just basically it boiled down to her looking at me in my eyes and being like, don't you realize how good you are? not like as a comedian or as an entertainer, but as a person that I'm a good person that deserves certain things and deserves love and deserves kindness. And sometimes I don't um, demand that and set, set myself up as needing that. Sometimes my self-esteem isn't the best for that. Um, and that's in anything where it's jobs or relationships. And now I'm really trying to focus and make sure that anyone that I bring into my life, it's someone that I'm genuinely interested in and bringing value to me. And I'm not sleeping with people just because they're available, um, but because I truly enjoy them as a person. I'm gonna be reject. I got. I can't wait. I don't think I've ever done that. But I'm. A, I'm. I'm. A, that's the new goal is that someone's gonna want to sleep with me and I'm gonna reject them. I'm so. <laughs> So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Um, <laughs> uh, just overall, um, it was exactly what I needed to get back to the place that I started. And, and and I'm now feeling like I am restarting again in my comedy and where I'm headed towards and to get so much positive feedback from people, again, who had seen me from the beginning, who are now saying, oh, this hour is the closest to you you ever been this is like you know you leveled up and i'm really excited i'm loving the material right now and um, i'm excited for you guys to see it whenever it comes together um health wise i'm just been real into my jujitsu had it today um things seem like they're moving forward i'm getting more light on my toes more endurance for sure and as anything, just always learning a bunch of life lessons when it comes to my jujitsu about staying positive, about 
leaning in when you want to pull away about uh just being able to breathe in uncomfortable situations and I know I've been bringing it up a lot. I think that's what anybody, when they get into it, they just start talking about it all the time, but I love it. And I recommend it to anybody. If you're, if you're thinking about uh, self-defense or if you're thinking about just fitness that you, you wanted to, to get a hold of and take care of, then get into some jujitsu because it is both the um, best workouts and the most like mentally stimulating and spiritual things that I've been able to do and I, I look for I can't wait till I get to my year anniversary of it I'm excited to keep going at it um other than that just been going out on some dates trying to stay open and meet people and um find someone that I like uh it's difficult it, it, I get frustrated about it because I love smart people and hardworking people and kind people who are also beautiful and work out a bunch. Um, so <laughs> so uh, that's a solid, you know, that person's probably in high demand. And, and that's what I always tell myself when I'm like, oh, man, I'm getting frustrated and I can't find thing. And because I, I still truly don't know what I want. And, and mostly I'm trying to stay true in my goal of not getting into any type of relationship for the uh all of 2023 and i was talking to blair about it um and i was like oh this is gonna be easy we already eight months almost nine months in and she was like yeah but that's the 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 fall and the winter's coming and that's when it gets harder and i'm already starting to feel that way where i get a little lonely or a little um just uh you know we talked about it before but not having anybody to celebrate your victories with or to talk shit about the people you hate with that's what i love a lot about a relationship someone that truly has your back and believes in you and um, laughs with you and just makes you feel at ease. And, um, and if you don't have that, don't mean there's people who are in relationships who don't have that. So that's the whole point of this is that I'm not going to settle for anything. I'm not going to go put myself into something just because I don't, because I'm uncomfortable not being in something. Um, I'm going to, do the work on myself and try to make sure that if I do find love again, that I'm able to be open to it and able to trust them and able to trust myself and to be the uh, catch that I know myself to be. So I'm excited. Um, again, I do hope uh, whoever it is is bisexual. Um, <laughs> spice things up a bit just <laughs> that would be lovely uh, so, oh, hit me in the dms if you fit that um if you fit all of those prerequisites where well, you're extremely kind uh you funny and you're smart you're driven you've got passions you make your own money but it doesn't have to be like a lot but it should be a fair amount um and then you're also bisexual uh then get at me other than that uh leave me the fuck alone <laughs> <laughs> if you don't meet those goals uh, <laughs> we got sweaty september just around the corner for the next week's episode i'm really excited about it i'm taking this uh program to do a little cleanse and get my health together get my eating together gonna be working out every day trying to uh go to jujitsu a bunch we're gonna catch in i'm gonna probably take some videos at jujitsu class take some videos of other uh activities that i'm doing and of course like i said a hashtag the sweaty september send us your 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 pics and your videos we'll post those up as well um other than that let's get to our, our guest this week what do you what, what, look at us two guests in a row Oh, wow don't get used to it because i don't like booking this shit down. <laughs> but we got one of my favorite comedians of all time one of the best comedians a great actor you know him uh from the movie the wrestler which is a, like a classic film I mean, that's a that's a criterion classic i believe i don't know but it should be um and then just a unique personality great mind and fun person to talk with check out his new special on youtube called domestic short hair it's available for you to watch right now so as soon as you finish this 
podcast, go ahead, put it on, or just pause it and you go, what, Tyler Perry's got a new special? I'm going to go check that out. I'll get back to this podcast. Either way, enjoy our conversation with my friend, Todd Berry. Enjoy it. Todd, thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Of course. I appreciate it. Um, I'm sure you've never seen this podcast. Or <laughs> I listened to an episode. You listened to yeah, it? Yeah, you to Blair agree Saki to come one. on? Okay. Yeah, I had to do my research. Yeah, of course. You want to make sure you're not walking into a <laughs> trap or a racist rant of some right. type. Yeah. 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 I yeah. wasn't too worried about that. Oh, good. The trap or the racist rant. Good. Um, well, since you did listen, you might know I generally start with a compliment saying what I enjoy about uh, the person who I'm interviewing. And for you, I'll give you two compliments. Okay. More than one. That's Yeah, two is more than one. Truly. <laughs> um, number one is that you're probably at least top three of my least favorite people to follow. Oh, um, God. I didn't see where that was headed. I got scared. <laughs> One of my least favorite people. Holy shit. Yeah. That's a compliment. To it re- is. To follow, really? Yeah, truly. A, because you're really funny and you um, work in a similar pattern that I do of like this rhythmic base of building uh, with your comedy and with your bits. Um, and I think our rhythms are different but similar enough that when i follow you it's like they were like we already got this and so i always found whenever i follow you to be extremely difficult and huh. um, have you followed me a lot no just two or three times wow even that many wow yeah no enough to, to remember um uh, and then the second compliment is that you were a part of a story that was one of the moments when i felt like i I had um was you don't feel ever feel like I made it or make have make it in comedy, but there was a time where I was like, oh okay, I'm doing something. Yeah. Um, it was in San Francisco during a sketch fest where we were both at an after party after some shows, and I saw you and you were. In, I don't know that many people usually at parties, and so I walked by you, but I saw you were talking to a lady, so I was like, mm-hmm. I'm gonna not in, uh, bother him just tapped you on the shoulder and kept it moving but then i saw that the lady who you were talking to i think i know this story then excused herself quickly and then came and talked to me yeah and then we left and had sex and then we ended up in a off and on relationship for like a year uh in which she was super fun and a lawyer who would fly herself out and then buy me dinner and then have some of the raunchiest sex i've ever had and I always felt that that was a great moment for me because I saw the look on your face where you were like, that, I wanted to have sex with her. I, I don't remember. No, it's, that's exactly what happened. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's a long time ago. Frankly. Oh, I remember it with, with great clarity. But uh, I don't know how that falls into the compliment category. <laughs> <laughs> missing the compliment portion. Of I think it was. Is that a compliment? Because it was fun. It was great for me. Uh, no, I'm happy for you. I'm, <laughs> I'm happy for you. But uh, oh, okay. You said you remembered it, though. I remember you telling the story. I think on Twitter you hit me with that story. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Okay. Yeah, that's what I remember. <laughs> I remember nothing about anything else. But I'm happy for you. Thank you. I'm happy for the on again. I'm always congratulating people on their on again, off again relationships. Well, I think she's married <laughs> or something now. She's yeah. got a full time relationship now. Well, that guy should be complimenting you then, right? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> Pass it on. <laughs> uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> that's it. Oh, that's it. <laughs> that's, that's the whole podcast. That's wow. pretty much it. Wow. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Todd, tell me about your special domestic short hair. Um, it was filmed before a live capacity crowd at the Den Theater in Chicago. Oh, I love that place. Yeah, it's kind of a little bit about over a year ago. Maybe I shouldn't say when I filmed it, but it took a while to get it out there. And I don't know. I looked at the YouTube comments. It was surprisingly good YouTube comments. Mm-hmm. Uh, which I shouldn't have looked to begin with because I those almost always I mean that's the if I were gonna advise someone if someone said should I look at my YouTube comments, they'd be like, No, I won't let you look at your YouTube comments. But yeah, I did. Generally mean. Yeah, they were for the most part pretty nice. 
And how many specials have you put out now? Uh, I think this is my sixth, mm -hmm. counting half hours. Okay. Yeah, it's my... Yeah, six, I think. How do you feel about your growth or process right now? Are things um, changing? Are you happy? I mean, I guess if you were before this a year ago, you're not exactly at the starting over phase, but... Well, I mean, the thing is, I didn't know when it was coming out, so I... I don't write really fast. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I write faster than some people, but I don't, I'm not like, I got a new hour every year. Like, mm -hmm. I, I don't know how people do that. Mm -hmm. And I'm not even sure I want to do that, honestly. No, it seems like, I know I don't want to do yeah. that. Yeah. I feel like every three years, it's just hard. I just don't want to be like filling the time. Yeah. And my, my jokes, you know, I get a new joke, I get excited. I'm like, I got work done. And I realize... I have a new 35 seconds mm -hmm. in my act, which is, it all adds up. But um, but now I'm I'm going on tour. I'm in the middle of tour, actually, where I just decided the best way to handle it is to do half crowd work and half jokes. Mm -hmm. And I actually split it in half like that. And I call it the half joking tour. Because that way it's like, I don't have an, you know, I didn't want to do, I don't want to do anything that's on the special, but I don't have a new hour. Mm -hmm. So I found a way to cheat. Yeah, to, tr to to trick people out of their money. Yeah, yeah. It's well, no, it's it's advertised as they know what they're getting into. Okay, so, no, no, no. so you just like it's gonna be not the best. No, it's it's gonna be. I think it will. It's a it's it was a good show. So I've done three shows so far, and it's been going pretty well. Okay, you're really uh, good at crowd work. Yeah, thank you. Third third compliment. How there you go. Yeah, um, cool one. yeah, I am, and I, it's kind of I kind of like doing it, but I'm kind of. You know, it's kind of like these clips that everyone's posting. Or, yeah. It's just like, I don't want to be part of that, really. No, I don't know how to do it. Um, can you explain to me how to be good at crowd work? Because it's difficult for me because um, I find myself, like in this moment, when it's me and you just chit-chatting in the podcast, I'm engaged and I enjoy you as a person, so I'm interested in finding out. However, when I'm on stage... I find myself very egotistical and don't want, don't truly care about anybody else there. Ah, okay. So I, it's hard for me to go, what do you do? Because I don't care. <laughs> I don't care in the sense that I'm really, I really want to know what you do. Cause 90% of the time it's like, you know, it or something, mm -hmm. nothing, no offense to it people, but it's not like, you know, it's not like I work in a dildo factory or something, mm -hmm. something that I could have a lot of fun with easily. But sometimes the people with the most boring jobs end up having a story or something. That's, but your question was how to connect. I don't. I how don't do think I you, care about it? I don't oh. think you need to care about it. Okay. Why do you? I mean, I don't know. How do you care about it? I care about it because I, I get bored with myself a little bit. Whoa, I'm, the opposite. I'm whispering. I'm whispering into a microphone <laughs> on a podcast, so no one will hear me. Um, no, I sometimes just like. Even just doing these half crowd work, half I do the jokes at the beginning and I stick to it and I don't do any crowd work. Even that going a half hour without sort of mixing it up a little bit mm -hmm. seems like it's kind of, I don't know. Something, when, when I have a moment that's spontaneous in the crowd, it energizes me, not to where I'm high energy, but it excites me. I, I do get that. I like it when things go off script and... There's a bit of interaction, but I just don't like engaging with the other, uh, the audience that much. I find it to get rowdy and make it so that I don't have, I think I like control when I'm on stage. Yeah, no, I mean, I, when I did, I've done a few crowd work tours and had one of my specials as a crowd work special. Mm -hmm. And I found that people said, dude, people are rowdy. It's like, for the most part, it's the opposite. Like They're almost timid sometimes. Mm -hmm. And they- they don't necessarily want to talk to me. And if they don't, then I leave them alone. I, I back off. But they're not like, it's a free-for-all. Because that would bum me out. I like a nice civilized show. And my, my fans are pretty well-behaved. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. They would be more mild-mannered and laid back. Yeah. Um, that with the clips, I understand what you're talking about a bit because I've been trying to figure, because it seems certainly more ne necessary to promote these days but i don't want like to do crowd work so i've found myself 
mostly i also don't like to necessarily do topical humor that much yeah but i'd rather so i'm now i'm like oh if i come up with a topical bit i just throw that up as a clip and that's been my way of trying to do things yeah i mean i feel like I've got a few clips going now from the new special and it's, I'm glad they're just jokes. And I understand why people do crowd work clips because they're disposable and it's like, here, you can have this. It's not, I don't need to repeat that again or worry mm. about someone seeing it again. So, but at the same time, I think people are now going on stage for that kind of content and sort mm-hmm. of forgetting like, well, you're supposed to be doing a show. Yeah, no, I've heard things where people have been like, well, the audience wasn't funny tonight. And I'm like, what do you, what do you mean? <laughs> right, right. Yeah, because I've had people, when I do crowd work, they'll, like, happen the other night, someone, like, apologize. I'm sorry I didn't have more for you. It's like, it's not on you. It's on me to make whatever you tell me to be funny. It's not like, hey, man, you really disappointed me by mm-hmm. having a job that I couldn't come up with a, <laughs> a fucking a riff about. But. How long have you been doing stand-up now, Todd? Almost, it's going to be in November first. Will be thirty six years. Thirty six years. That's know, so many that years. Insane, right? That's a lot of years. That's, I mean, I only I like it though. Do you? Yeah. You like that I've done it thirty six years. Yeah. Yeah. Because I've done it seventeen, and so it makes me feel okay. So many more to go. Yeah, you got uh, nineteen more years. Yeah. Till you're bitter and angry. No, I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, 19 more years of thinking it's fun <laughs> I mean I do have I do wonder about that like how do you keep yourself engaged or do you find yourself um because there's a quote I heard I don't remember who it's from but they're just about the more experience that you get the less you're able to like suffer fools and suffer like minor imperfections or to me i feel like i've been again i've been doing 17 years and i find myself certainly getting more cranky about the like travel and yeah. things like that and so i just wondering when you're 36 years deep how do you keep yourself entertained how do you keep well, yourself wanting to do it i mean the way i've been touring in the past years i don't know how many years i'm trying to do like one night you know like a tour like a band like a band might tour mm-hmm. or and just do a little theater or music venue, sometimes a comedy club. But that keeps it more interesting for me because it's just like, I don't know. Sometimes I think the clubs are important, but sometimes I just like I go to a city like, I don't need to do six shows Mm -hmm. in Columbus, Ohio. I can get my core group of whatever, 200 people. Yeah, I've been thinking a lot about that because I think with my oldest son having autism and like just the pandemic and stuff, really, this is two really weird mixes, but it'll come together at some point, uh, is that I learn a lot like with dealing with my son that sometimes you do these things just out of tradition without second guessing them that you really no longer serve you. And I often think about that when it comes to the club structure, when I start looking at like, I mean, just my last gigs and I was happy and the shows were filled out. And But like, so like sold out three shows, two shows were like a little undersold. And then I was feeling a little bummed because I was like, this is my hometown. This is Portland. I thought I'd sell out all the shows. And then I look and I, because I never even noticed, but I'm like, oh, tickets are like $40 right. before fees. And then there's a two drink minimum. And yeah. like, I do have a, a group of people who like me that are affluent but a lot of my people are working class people who are living check to check and that's a lot of money right you could do a a a different venue do a 25 five dollar ticket yeah and maybe make as much money maybe yeah we'll see let's get into into the weeds about money man that's that's what people love hearing about people do i think sometimes Um, they do people don't talk but yeah i mean that the the structure yeah there's a little that kind of bothers me and I, i don't like to I don't like to be told to do press. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like I gotta, I, you know, I haven't been, I kind of want to do what I want to do for the most part, which, you know, you can't always do, but I, I don't want to be told, you know, go talk to this country music station tomorrow at 6 a.m. Mm-hmm. And they're not going to know who you are and they're not going to do any preparation and you're going to be exhausted and it's not going to bring anyone to, to the club. <laughs> And you know, I know you got in tonight and you did a show and so you're tired and uh, you're not going to be able to fall asleep because you're a little buzz. So, but could you get up at six in the morning right. and, and, and get abused by someone? 
<laughs> by a guy who refuses to do any type of research but swears he's funnier than you yeah. the moment you walk in right. the door. He was angry because he goes to bed at 7 o'clock at night <laughs> to wake up first morning. I mean, there's some of them are very nice. Some oh, of them some surprise of them me. Sometimes I'll do one of them. Like I've done, I'm not into sports at all, but I've done sports stations where the guy's like, knows my work and it's a good conversation. But mm -hmm. all right, that happened one time, but I'm making it sound like sports. But uh, yeah, I mean, so I, I kind of like to, I think when I do like one night somewhere, it's it's more of an event and, you know, may, they make a poster and mm -hmm. it's not just like, like a mill, you know, a comedy. I don't know if that's a good way to describe it, but it's just not like. Every every show, you know, everyone does five shows here, no matter what their draw is, because mm -hmm. yeah. it gets a little. You know, uh, am I talking too much? No, okay, that's pretty much the point of this. <laughs> I uh, no, I feel like s sometimes you do a show and you're like, why did? How were there two hundred people there? You know, like at a comedy club, and you're like, oh, they have them got it free, and they're the ones texting, you know, mm -hmm. or talking, or both, probably. Yeah, I've been more um, mindful in just which places I choose. I just had, a, I went and did a show. I mean, I'll say exactly. I went and did Governors in New Jersey, and I just had a horrible time. New Jersey or Long Island? Long Island, that's yeah. it. Um, and just had a bad time. The crowd just, you know, somebody said they didn't know who it was. And one thing, and, and some of that is fine, but I, I think I take it hard sometimes because usually my material is very personal. So if I'm like talking about my sons or talking about something I'm going through and people are like, I'm, I end up, I always know it's going bad when I, when I go, like, I don't even fucking need you. I'm making money. <laughs> I was like, Oh no, you know, it's a bad show when you start telling people to go fuck themselves. Cause you're on an Apple show. <laughs> So after that show, I said, I just called my agent and I was like, um, I know we're trying to build things and make bigger, but I go like, I'm, I don't think I'm built for every place. Yeah, so I mean, there's places like the Bell House in New York. Have yeah. You, have you done that? Yeah. I love it there. Yeah. I mean, it's, they treat you well. You, they pay you very well. Mm -hmm. Crowds are amazing. And you're like, oh, this is a, like a joy. Yeah. I like the den. I love the den. The, den the, is the staff kind of, yeah, there is wonderful. There, yeah. I was thinking about shooting a special there. So. That's my idea. They don't steal it. Well, I have a, okay. <laughs> and Sam Burrell's idea. I look at your backgrounds. I got to look <laughs> at your backgrounds, see if it, how it works. But yeah, so I, you know, I try. I'm trying to write as much as possible, and mm -hmm. but it's it's uh, it's hard, right? I hate having like a ticking clock because mm -hmm. I'm going to be in Portland doing a show at the Revolution Hall, which is or Revolution Hall, which is a very big place yeah, for me, is. and I just don't I. I need some more jokes to just fill out a half hour. I probably shouldn't say that, but because I don't want to do anything from the special because it's just like, I mean, that's a, kind of a, because I've been doing this so long, there's a long time in my career where you never have to think about that, mm -hmm. where there was guys coasting with the same material for 10 years, which is not something I want to do either. Mm -hmm. But this, this thing, like, I heard that joke on you. I'm like, okay. So other people didn't Has hear it though. Has anyone ever said that? There, I don't think that reaction's ever happened. Not, not like verbally, but I mean, I've you know you see stuff online if you make the mistake of looking for stuff online mm -hmm. or be like there was. I remember once I think on MySpace, is, I did a show in suburban Chicago, and these people complained. I found it, you know, on MySpace that they, I went we went to see Todd Barry, and he did the same stuff he did three years ago, and and I think they were probably right, and I did feel like all right, I let those people down, mm -hmm. even though I hate that they wrote that and mm -hmm. they're terrible people for writing it. They were also correct, and but <clears throat> but I mean, then there's you know, then there's people who think you know, you should, you know, if you repeat something that you did in a, you're re they like to say you're recycling. I think they'll use that word. Yeah, I mean, it's such a odd um, thing to deal with because it's so backwards from how music works. Whereas people, that's all they want is to hear the thing that they recognize. Yeah, but with comedy, if you recognize it and that lack of surprise. You don't have the aspect of surprise, then it really kind of loses the magic for people. Um, so, but for me, I just kind of live with like a lot of my. I, I get a lot of inspiration from outside sources like video games and wrestling, and a lot of my favorite video game de developers, like my least favorite video game developers, operate on a yearly cycle. 
You know, you're going to get a new game every year from them. Um, it's going to be slightly different, but mostly the same. But you keep playing it because you already like it, but you're kind of like, oh, it's kind of boring. My favorite people always are like, we'll, we'll put it out when it's done. Yeah. I mean, like you're plenty of authors and filmmakers go years with between projects. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's, there's people who are being, whose books are being taught in college for the past hundred years who wrote like three books in their whole career, you know? But so that's my excuse for not writing fast enough. No, I, I mean, I know you're undercutting it as a joke, but yeah. I think it culturally, there is something to say there about there's been a push to this grind culture of putting something out every year, every month, putting out a clip every week, whereas the artistic process needs growth. It needs you to sit for a while and right. to be able to contemplate on what has changed in your life. Um, I had a conversation with like my with Blair and, and my other best friend Gabe recently about my comedy, and they were like, because I'm trying to put together what I think will be my hour for, for hopefully early next year. And they're like, Oh my God, thank God you didn't try to shoot something last year when you were still married and all your bits were about, I love my wife and everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my way of finding out you're not married anymore. Yeah, no, not anymore. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm call that lawyer again. Hopefully maybe she's not together. With <laughs> <her husband. laughs> Or to represent you for the. <laughs> 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 that was my first reaction when you said call the lawyer. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, no, it's true. You're not. Um, <laughs> Jen, I need your help. But uh, yeah, I think that, you know, you got it. It's good to have like a little fire under you and like have goals and maybe like, oh, by this gig, I want to have 10 more minutes. Mm -hmm. But I, want, it's, I always want it to be good. And, you know, every special, every time you do a special or an album, or I should say myself, there's always like a couple of things where like, oh, I kind of just putting this out there because I, it takes up two and a half minutes or something. Yeah. And, or you're something that you're just so tired of, a joke that you're just so tired of. And, and you don't even know why, like, why I'm even, it's coming out of my mouth. I don't know why I'm even doing this joke, but. I'm saying don't come see me live because it's a big ripoff. Yeah, that's what it sounds like, really. <laughs> it sounds like you, you don't even like it. <laughs> no, no, I, got, I got some good new jokes happening. <laughs> um, is there, do you, how do you get inspired? Do you go to music? Do you see other comedians? What do you do? I, I mean, sometimes I don't often go see other comedians, but there's times where like, I think it's good, like I'll, Usually when Doug Stanhope comes to New York, I'll go mm -hmm. see him and just sit in the audience. I mean, I don't pay, but I just sit in the audience. Because it's sometimes cool to sit there and watch someone and go, oh, that, that's what I do. That's kind of cool. I have that job. I have this guy's job. Mm -hmm. But I don't really, I mean, most of my jokes are like me running into people or say something stupid or, or, or someone I can make fun of, like these little short stories. But I don't, I don't really have like a, a thing like I put on music and then I start pouring out the jokes or anything like that or mm -hmm. video games or, uh, so it just comes to me when it comes to me. Mm -hmm. I think I have a short attention span. So it's, I wish I could sit down and write, just focus for two hours a day. I don't think I've ever met anyone who does that. I think Seinfeld probably does. Is that, that. he does? That's what he does. I think he writes out everything. Yeah. Like, okay. But, uh, and that's how you get bits of like, why they call it on the train and not in the train. Are you slagging someone there? But I just thought it was a horrible bit. Oh, okay. Um, it's the bit of someone that writes it all out. I mean, I just think people have different styles. Yeah. And some people do write it out, and, it's, and some people work it out on stage. I'd like to find a balance, though. Like work it out a little at home. Yeah. I think we're very similar in that. But I, I mean, I call it fishing. Like I'm always looking a little bit, but I'm not actively hunting. I'm just kind of like, I'm open right. to it. Right. And I just write little keywords in my phone. Yeah, that's all I have. Mm -hmm. And some people don't, when you talk to them, they're like, really? That's how you write? They're like, yeah. And sometimes I'll listen to a joke of mine on tape that's like kind of one of my epic jokes, like kind of longer than a minute. And I'm like, wow, that's, I, 
You can call anyone longer than a minute. An epic yeah, joke. I mean, yeah. that's how you call. Well, a lot of people call them bits or chunks. You use epic, epic, joke. epic joke. I'm talking okay. about <laughs> talking about a joke where I just keep going and going for maybe a minute fifteen. <laughs> but those like, you know, I whispering uh, the, the 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 Italian dressing joke in your special, oh, showing you that I did watch. Oh some yeah, of them. that's that's one of my favorite. I like it too. Jokes. Um. If this were morning radio, you'd force me to do it right now. <laughs> <laughs> you'd be like, Dad, I understand you bought a salad recently. <laughs> yeah, it's like Comics Unleashed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever do Comics Unleashed? No, but I um I it's funny, I I once uh I watched it once and I think I've turned it down because mm-hmm. I, I just don't that's not something I'd really wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Although I think it's harmless and I wanted it? to do it so bad. I did I do it something... once because I because every time I'd go to a hotel and enter a show at three in the morning, I'd turn on the TV guy channel and there'd be like Whitney Cummings or somebody on this show yeah. with Byron Allen. And I was like, that seems fun. It's just but yeah, I mean those setups were right. They're but the I, worst. But I he, I watched one episode and he did literally a one joke monologue. Mm-hmm. So I just tweeted like Byron Allen just did a one joke monologue. And I th- and then he wrote back something like, Yeah, but did you see the mic drop? <laughs> Which I thought, oh, that's fine. You guys got a sense of humor about himself. And then I ran into him at uh Sirius Radio. I was doing an interview and he I wasn't waiting in the lobby and he came in and he looks and he smiles like hey. And I kind of I thought maybe he knew who I was, but he didn't. But I actually asked for it. I got a picture with him because he's just so friendly and approachable. Yeah, Byron like, Allen's oh, the I best. Yeah, I liked when I went there. His mom was like running most of the stuff. Oh, really? He's a billionaire now. He owns yeah. the Weather Channel. It's super fucking cool to me. Um, and yeah, he gave me my favorite of all uh, joke tee-ups, which was wrong. I hear you're okay with gay people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't hate gay people. <laughs> I don't hate him. No. <laughs> Is that really the tea up? That was the tea up. Does he come up with the tea ups or does he ask you to come up? No, you don't come up with them. They just do them. Oh my God. It made me laugh. I like, I almost shut down. Fred, right I now. heard you don't like credit cards. <laughs> you, you heard that? Really? <laughs> Someone was having a conversation about me to you and they said, I don't like credit cards. Mitch, I heard you don't care if an escalator is broken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does, it does half the joke in the setup. <laughs> Oh. But I also don't think that show paid very well, if I recall. No, it did not pay well. No, that's how he's a billionaire. You don't pay, become a billionaire by paying well. <laughs> Todd, what do you now that your special's out? What do you what do you, what do you want to do? Um, I'm got. You this... want to do a sequel to the wrestler? Oh, did you see the wrestler? I, of course, I saw the wrestler, Todd. <laughs> I saw that before we even knew each Holy other. Shit. Like when I first met you, I was like, I mean, I'm a big pro wrestling fan. I was like, I oh my god, that's Todd Barry from the wrestler. And here I am in your suspiciously big house. It's very big. <laughs> well, I used to have another person, two people. Here. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. I looked up the address to just see how far I was from where I'm staying, and then immediately, like a a Zillow listing comes up. And they're like, all right, I didn't need to know how much you bought the house for. <laughs> and I pay for them to do that anytime. So I'm sure you love it. You're, you're the type who would love it, but yeah. You know, I was like, please you put, make sure whoever goes by that they know. Put it in Google Maps. So <laughs> this goes right to the Redfin listing. <laughs> But uh, I was like, well, I don't know. I don't know about that kind of money. Yeah, but, uh, a lot of voiceovers. Oh, voiceovers? A lot of voiceovers. Yeah, Trolls. Trolls especially. Oh, you did? Helpful. Oh, okay. I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, oh. three movies, several video games. I oh. uh, did the On Ice. Anything that Cooper, they wanted Cooper to do. I said, don't oh, outsource no it idea to you anybody. Did that. Oh, that's, see, I do a lot of TV animation, but I've never done a movie animation. The movie was great. It's fun because sometimes you just randomly get a check. And because then eventually they, after the second movie, they sent me a thing. I don't know if I, I mean, I'm fine to say it now. Uh, there were they, uh, I get a very, very tiny piece of merchandise as well. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. I got to get me in a movie like that, man. Mm-hmm. And Troll sells a lot of merchandise. <laughs> <laughs> 
Did you audition for that or did they just? No. Just, uh, I know. It seems like some of the best things I didn't audition for. Like, Truly. You know I mean, I that's what audition. I always say. I say I never, I, I do not know anything that, uh, I mean, I can say a couple of auditions that I got, but for the most part, anything where I was like, I want this, I'm going to get it. I've never gotten it. You want to hear my wrestler audition story? Yeah. Which I, I'm sort of friendly with Darren Aronofsky. Mm-hmm. And he kind of offered me this part in it in the wrestler and then he said oh then i heard oh you have to audition for like the producer or whatever so it was just me him and the producer i read it i think i read the scene once he stopped me he goes see you on set like at the audition like that's unheard of yeah and then there's other auditions where like the parts like half as much as as what or you know some guys youtube short and you're like here's eight 18 lines that you have to put on tape and Oh, yeah. I did an indie film, one of the worst auditions I ever had. I was excited because the guy who was starring in it I really enjoy and wanted to work with. Um, but then the main guy, who also directed, um, wanted to do an audition on Zoom because it was during the pandemic. And so we're doing the audition. And so I'm thinking, okay, we're going to do... They sent me every scene from the movie that the character is in. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, okay, we'll probably do the first couple. And then, or he'll want to do the first and the fourth, you know, pick one. He wanted to do every single scene. And then um, including a scene where he goes, okay, for in this scene, you don't have any lines, but you're just looking out a window and you notice something. Do you have a window nearby? <laughs> Can you move the laptop towards the window? <laughs> I need to see how you look out the window. <laughs> I can't just can't just take a chance that you'll be fine with the window scene. I can't look at your resume <laughs> and determine that you might be able to do some of this. Yeah, those those auditions are like. Do you put yourself on tape for auditions? Yeah, a lot. Yeah. Also, I've got to take a break because I'm cramping up. I've been cramping up all day. You are taking a break? Okay. Yeah, because I've been took jujitsu and I worked out. And all right. I, had a, some real cramp shit going on right now. I mean, you can keep this in, but until now. <laughs> no, I took Pilates for a bit. Not for a long time. Until the... Yeah, I, it's the only way I'm comfortable. <laughs> I'm going to do crowd work with Hogan here. And we're back. I had cramps for a minute. <sighs> what were we talking about? That really derailed me. Oh, the wrestler, my audition. Oh yeah. Oh, oh do, putting yourself on tape for yeah. audition. Yeah. What about it? I was just gonna say that I, I walk around and go, I don't I wanna why don't I get more auditions? And then it'll be like, We need this by tomorrow at noon, eighteen pages, and you're like, Well, that just ruined my night. Yeah. I and, really hate it. Yeah. I would say just hand me shit. It's gotta be worth it to it's gotta be something worth it because cause I can't mail it in i never am able to like just be like all right well i did it and i don't think it's good but i'm gonna turn it in i always yeah. fucking i go see my acting coach i um like come up with some lines to improvise give them a couple different takes of it and so it's always a pa- passion project for me so i had to come to a point where i was like look if it and it was a hard role but i was like if they don't give me 48 hours to do it then just pass yeah, because I can't do it in twenty four. It's going to ruin my whole fucking like you said. It's going to ruin my day. Yeah, yeah. I've turned stuff down where I just go. I don't. I don't have time to get this together. It seems like you turned a lot of stuff down. I do because you're saying I haven't done a lot of stuff, so I must have turned a lot of stuff down. <laughs> That's what is that what you're saying? Yeah. Uh I didn't turn down this podcast, so maybe that's what we should be thinking about. <laughs> since, since, isn't this about thinking positive? Yeah, it really right, is. Then. But it's also about some, you know, lighthearted shit talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know that. <laughs> who is Doug Stanhope your favorite comedian, or who's your favorite comedian right now, Todd? Oh, I don't know who my favorite right now. Give is me that. just you know what I'll I'm you, asking. I'll I'm give not... you names. I'll give you names of Thank people. Thank you, like. Jesus. Um, and I'm going to leave people out. This always freaks me out whenever I have to do a list because I leave people out. Uh, I love Doug Stanhope, Dave Attell, uh, Sarah Silverman, Maria Bamford. Oh, God. Sam Morell's really funny. Mm-hmm. Uh, this guy named Gary Veter is really funny. Uh, Marina Franklin's really funny. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rachel Feinstein's really funny. Oh, shit. You're funny. You didn't have to do that. I had to. You kind of were like pointing at yourself. No. A little bit. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I could I could go on. 
No, you don't have Jackie Cation. Love Jackie. Yeah. She's really fun. I like her podcast. I like her and Lori Kilmartin. Lori Kilmartin's very funny. Yeah. I like listening to her podcast because sometimes it's very angry. And it reminds me, I tell them this to their face. I, I go, I listen to your podcast because it reminds me not to get that angry. Oh, shit. Because <laughs> 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 there's always a cycle with their podcast. It's like, we're going to promote this project. We're getting ready to shoot a special. Special comes out. They didn't get as much money as they thought they were going to get. And they're mad as fuck. And, it's, and then it repeats itself. Oh, okay. I like it. It's a good listen. Yeah, listen to people getting angry about showbiz stuff is kind of interesting. I love it. Again, I, I mean, I know it's me making fun, but I, it truly does. It reminds me to look at all things and, and look at the way other people um, handle their business. It gives me different ideas for that. And it also keeps me grateful when I do hear someone where they're like, oh, this sucks. And I'm like, oh, I don't have that issue. So I should be more grateful about what I'm able to do. I think we all learned something right there. That's what the podcast is. <laughs> Just getting better. Just getting better. Um, that kind of leads me to be about the creation of your special. How do you feel about the landscape in the market right now? I know yours is out on the YouTube a special thing. Um, so I imagine not the huge all things payday. comedy. Yeah. All things comedy, not yeah. like, what's this? Oh, special Jesus Christ, what year did I go to? They don't even exist I know, anymore. You're talking about news group. Oh my god. Comedy, <laughs> comedy also, I used to love reading those special things. Me too. And then we can see your work on the spew, Patton Oswald's <laughs> forum. Um, <laughs> That's good. um yeah, I mean it was I wanted to sell it to like a streamer and like Netflix is passing on a lot of people. Now. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know a lot of people who've been passed on and people where they're like, I don't even want to see anything of yours. Not like angrily, just like we're not even, you're, it's not even up for discussion really. Mm -hmm. So I got passed on by a few, but uh, it doesn't, I, I mean, yeah, the, day, the days for me of like, because I've done Comedy Central specials or other specials where you get a nice little paycheck. You know, oh, I can do something with this money. Mm -hmm. And this one is really, I have to pay them back. Or, <laughs> I mean, they paid, they laid out money for a special. So mm -hmm. the money that's going to be made is going to first pay them back, which is the way it is. And and they, but they did give me a $2 million advance. <laughs> I just made that up. <laughs> you fell for that. You were like, "Oh, you shit, two million. I thought you said you didn't make money off this." Uh, are you? Do you? Are you in negotiations to do a special with those? Not in negotiation. I think if anything, that's been one of the main reasons that's like I did my last special came out in twenty eighteen, so it's been enough time five years to put out another special. Um, I thought I had an hour together. Luckily, I didn't record it because my life changed. I love my hour right now. Um, and I think it's going to, I think it's better than anything I've done previously. Um, and I'm, I want to put it out in the best way possible, but I, so many of my friends I watched who like, I think are so funny and so good at it. And just the way that's kind of the bar changes all the time. And I'm used to that. I don't take it personal, but like you look at certain things and you go like, okay, for me to get a special, I'm supposed to have this and that and these credits and this TV credits, or yeah. I should be on a show and this. And then I get all of that. And they're like, oh, still no. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, I wonder if they over overpaid some people. And no, you know what I mean? Cause yeah. they paid out a lot of money to some people. Yeah. I don't know if that's part of it, but I imagine money's part of everything. So, yeah, I know but, uh, Live Nation is starting a new thing, right? Oh, Should they are? I think so. I don't know if that was news I'm not supposed to say. That's a, that's a big insider trading you just did right there. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna get, the FBI is going to knock on the door real soon. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think now, I mean, I've sort of reframed the purpose of a special to be like a ticket seller. Mm -hmm. So like, all right, I'll make the money by selling more tickets. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's all I got. That's all. Yeah, I mean, so it's just really like a, a hope that you can't even really measure. Yeah, but I mean, if I see a spike in my ticket sales because you know I get weekly reports, I'll, I'll probably attribute that to the uh, special. But, okay. but um, yeah, I mean, it's just uh, yeah, it's just like a calling card kind of. 
But I mean, the good thing is that I'm kind of tired of all the material on the special. Mm -hmm. So I don't have this burning desire to do some of it. I would like to keep doing, mm -hmm. but yeah, I think that's it. right now I'm letting the art dictate because the money and the business aspect isn't really, I remember before I was like, oh, the market seems like it's a little shakier. So I'm going to wait to see if I can get more than I did for my comedy central special. And then a couple of years went by. I'm like, Oh, there's no way I'd be lucky if I get a quarter of what I got yeah. last time. And so th then it just really got to the point of like, when I want to, truly feel the need to put something out where i'm like it's just sick of my hour and sick of doing it then i'll uh look into it and also just to um my son's birthday's coming up on april and he's turning 21 and i thought that was a big milestone and i was like i kind of want to put something out around his birthday or shoot something around his birthday to celebrate me and how much i put into raising him yeah i think yeah just wait till you have like a fucking where you like this is golden and i can't wait to do it and get it on film and then you know if it's if it's great then no matter where it is people will notice i think yeah i mean that's what i've heard before my, that's my I, rationalization for uh, i think you're right yeah because i was mad when my first one was on comedy central because i wanted to be on netflix and i got the same advice and i'm sure not many people saw it when it was on comedy central and then eventually came out on youtube and that's been one of the great things because then like it came out in 2018 and then they didn't put it out on YouTube till like 2021. And then people were like, Oh, I love your new special. And I'm <laughs> like, thank you. Yeah. yeah. And then it really lets you know that nobody cares but you. So exactly. Uh, what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh is this a stare down portion of the show? No, I'm just letting you enjoy I'm settling in. Okay, I'm settling in. Yeah, I think okay. I'm in. I, I thought think, you had a question. No, I don't. Oh, no, no, no. I, I don't. I don't. Okay, well, just relax. I uh, totally relax, man. You seem off put. No, I just thought you were. I think you were thinking I had something more to say and yeah. I was done. So it was this weird, like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm done, but he doesn't know I'm done. And then you. But then, then I was like, made... he hates me. And then I fucking started throwing shit around here. <laughs> <laughs> it just, it just escalated. <laughs> All right, we we're back. We're back on. And track. we're back. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's how you handle it. What that's the comic in me was able to diffuse that and turn mm -hmm. that into like a beautiful thing. Terry, uh, one thing, Todd, that I love your comedy. And but I, it's all it is always like stories about like minor inconveniences in your day or things that have been uh, going on in your travels. And I don't know. Do you ever I don't know much about your personal life. Yeah. Why uh, do you do that? I've just never been with my comedy very. I'm a pretty private person. basically. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, some people let it rip, talk about their families and their stuff like that. But I don't. Uh, and I kind of don't, I, I don't think everyone has to do that, you know? No, of course. I think whatever makes yeah. you happy is what you should so do. So I've always been kind of a private person, but yeah. But I have a girlfriend and a cat, if you want to know about that. I do. And uh, Tell me about your girlfriend and cat. My girlfriend is an artist and an art professor. And my cat is also an art professor. No, I'm my cat is a cat. Okay. And uh, that's that personal stuff. Do you love them? Yeah, of course. Both of them yeah, you yeah, love? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would be funny. Oh, no, I don't love them. <laughs> you never know. Yeah, that would be, that How would long be... have you had the girlfriend? Uh, almost two years. Two years. Yeah. How'd you meet? We met in uh, New York at a, after a show, actually. Oh, you were lucky I went there. Yeah, because you were... <laughs> She'd be with you now. Huh? <laughs> Unless enough time passed where she'd be with her actual husband. Yeah. Then. Which may, might have put her in a better position. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what does she bring to your life that makes you happy? Ah, uh, She's just smart and interesting and she's funny and yeah. Yeah, she's, you know, different. Interesting. And I already said interesting. No, it's okay to repeat. Yeah, it's just like an artist, you know, it's kind of cool to go out with someone. Yeah. Because they sort of can really, sort of like, I, 
we get each other on some level, we deal with people we have to gatekeepers type thing, mm -hmm. but it's also different enough where it's interesting to me. Yeah, I like that. And my cat <laughs> is also interesting to me. Do you have a cat? No, I have no pets. No. No, my oldest was always afraid of pets oh. um, when he was younger, deathly afraid of most pets. Seems like things might change as my new younger child truly loves dogs like with a passion seems like he really loves dogs yeah so that might change at some okay. point okay but get a little cat also <laughs> he didn't mention cats at all it's just, what's your child's name which one the young the one youngest one's teddy bear teddy bear mm -hmm. that's his name teddy bear yeah that's his okay. name that's his legal name bro. <laughs> seriously theodore bear funches oh god cool yeah. i like that get teddy bear a cat and a dog. Well, you said it. I didn't like the way you said it. What? <laughs> I just repeated back what you said. No, say it with joy in your heart. I'm talking about getting him a little kitty. That's pretty joyous. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like you put quotes around it when you said it. Mm, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. Put your little, get a cat for your kid. <laughs> Yeah, why don't you do that? <laughs> <laughs> you think you can't get married ever? Oh, it's it's possible. Mm -hmm. Save the date. <laughs> Are you going to get married again? I don't think that so. I don't see it. <laughs> no? No, I didn't like both two times. We're not good. Um, So I feel like. I'm open to love and things of that nature. But as I also, there were issues. And then I also told my mom the other day or in the last podcast where I was like, there were takeaways that I got from myself as well, which was like, I don't know if there's anybody I want to see every day. Right. Okay. Not just me. I like new things. I like kissing new people. I like learning about new people. Oh, I so do like polyamorous. Growing. Possibly. We'll see. I did say that recently where I go, like, maybe what I want is, like, two girlfriends that also... A little throuple thing? Yeah, maybe. Because I do like building together, but I'm going to not every... I'm going to be, again, not every day, so... Do you know anyone who's polyamorous who, where it doesn't blow up in their face? No, but I don't know anyone who's monogamous where it doesn't blow up in their face. All right, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's all kind of fucked. Yeah, I mean, it... Yeah, there's statistically, it's going to blow up in your face probably for a lot of people in relationships. Yeah. Not um, all of them. That's why I feel like, again, I'm going to probably just lean towards relationships where I hopefully do love these people and grow with these people. But at some point, we're probably not going to get married. I don't know if that's a thing that... Um, I feel like, I mean, I'd have to find some, either my life's going to have to change, which I hope it doesn't, or I find someone who's like doing really well, has their own business and is doing stuff and is adding to what I'm doing. They're probably busy as fuck. What are they going to do with me? You know? Right. Wow. I think or I'm going to bring another person in that is not provided. I think that you should treat it the way you're treating a special. When it happens, it happens. Mm. Wow. <laughs> that was one of the deepest things that's ever been said on this podcast. I yeah, guarantee. Yeah, no, I, I mean, <laughs> possibly. I agree with you. I mean, again, I'm open. I'm not. I, yeah. If, if, if someone could flip me. When I started my first marriage, I thought I'd never get married again after my first one. So to find someone and I thought I'd. I, that I love that much that I made me reconsider that was amazing. So then to get burnt again was kind of like, oh, okay, I don't know right. if I can even. I do know. think you'll be married again within four years. You think so? Yeah, I do. Wow. I would, if I were going to bet, I okay, would, I would bet. Let's come back to this. Uh, four years. I was going to say now. five years, but then I just trimmed it down to four. I mean, I feel like if it's going to happen, it has to be that way because then I'll be like 44, 45. I don't see if I get past 50. Then it's really just me, probably, and my video games. <laughs> oh, and escorts in Paris. In Paris. Yeah. Wow, we're not going to get escort in America. <laughs> <laughs> you got that kind of Paris money. 
Yes. <laughs> do you go on vacations? <laughs> huh? Do you go on vacations? I do. I mean, not recent. I did in um, work slash vacation in January. I went to Paris and Amsterdam. I planning another one, and in between, I'm not doing anything because I'm gonna figure out this divorce. So I'm gonna spend money either way. Where are you gonna go? Where did you go on your last vacation? Paris and Amsterdam. Oh, but where are you going on your next one? I should say Japan. Oh, Japan's Tokyo. The best. And, Have you been? Yeah, yeah, I've been once before. I went once. It's fucking amazing. I loved it. That's yeah, why I, I want to go, go there back. Again. Yeah, truly had a great time. I like the environment. I like the the feeling of the safety, of the lack of firearms. I felt that. Yeah. So that was lovely. Good food. Truly. In general, nerd culture, of anything. Oh, that's true. You must have been in heaven. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and hip-hop sh- uh clothing stores i love video games action figures and plus being black in, in tokyo is pretty fun because yeah. sometimes people one guy came up to me and just was like oh man i'm cool like you and i was like oh you don't you don't know me well <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i definitely ain't cool <laughs> as i look at your pac-man yeah that is cool actually it's pretty cool. I think I'm pretty cool. Yeah, you are a cool guy. I'm a cool guy. General fun nerd guy. Handsome. Do jujitsu. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Two kids, but single. Cool as fuck. Yeah, you got, yeah, got a nice house. Yeah. Yeah. Unmarked house that I almost didn't know I was at the right house. That's true. Everybody, it was one of my favorite things is to watch the camera to see. How people, how hesitant they are to come I up. called two people to find out it. I know you called my manager. For I, sure. called your, I called Blair also. <laughs> I was like, who do I know? Well, that knows, knows what his house looks like. Because <laughs> I've done that in LA where you go to the wrong house. And of you're like course. standing in someone's driveway and you're like, it's a good way to fucking yeah. freak someone out. Yeah, and a lot of people these days getting shot over yeah. that. So yeah. I, I understand. So let's get that, let's get a big sign. <laughs> I found the place. I don't give a shit about the next person. Huh? Uh, is there anything? Is there any message in your special? You don't do messages usually, huh? Uh no, I don't. I don't. I can't pretend. Wow, it's kind of like a missed opportunity. Really? I think so. What do you? Are you serious? No. Okay. Well, that would have been interesting if you were serious, but I'm glad. No, I mean not. it'd be really because to no, not serious at all because it'd be the opposite of what you normally do. You don't, yeah, you yeah. don't do that. I don't. Closed book. Yeah. But, do you think about ever opening it for a little bit? Because you do the. I mean, isn't that like another tool you can have? It is. I mean, I, uh, there was a joke I did a, f- a few specials ago. About being a germaphobe mm-hmm. and a lazy germaphobe was the theme of it. But and as when I heard the joke I, back recently, or I did a radio an interview and they played it, and I was like, oh, that's kind of a, a rare personal joke for me because I, I it's based on truth. But mm-hmm. but I don't I don't yeah I just I'm uncomfortable with being personal. Why? Because I just don't. It's just not what I'm drawn to do. Mm-hmm. I mean, some people are drawn to do. I mean, I've seen people talk on stage about their sex lives, and their parents are in the audience, and it's just like, it's like, wow, I just, it's just not me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But my a- message to answer your question <laughs> is, is: be kind. Uh, yeah, I don't have a message. <laughs> I'm just giving you a good time, a good shallow good time. No, it's not shallow. I like. I mean, but it is interesting to me because it's like, because sometimes I do feel like, oh, I should shore up some what I feel like are weak links in my abilities. I'm like, oh, I'm I'm not good at crowd work, so I should do crowd work. But then you, the how confident you are, and you're like, I don't want to be personal. It's not comfortable for me, so I don't do it. And that's how I feel about crowd work. Where I'm like, yeah, and I don't necessarily like one thing that always gets me like kind of cringe is when people say, got to get out of your comfort zone. It's like, you know, I get that on some level, but that doesn't mean you should do everything that you're uncomfortable with. Yeah. So don't do crowd work and I won't get personal. I love it. We'll stay on the other side. <laughs> don't do my crowd work thing and I won't do your personal thing. I'm like, okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> Good deal. I'm into that. Let's see. You have any questions for me, Todd? I'd never asked that before, but then I asked my mom on the last one, and she had great questions for Your me. Your mom had questions for me? Yeah, wonderful. She asked, uh, I mean, similar. She asked if I thought I'd ever get married again, and she asked about um, if I was happy about having another son now that I'm also getting divorced because I originally never, that wasn't part of the equation. I didn't know I'd be a single dad again. Yeah. So that was fun. Um, my question. So you can't ask either of those. Okay. I'm going to ask them anyway. No. I, <laughs> do you, uh, do you think you'll be doing stand up forever? Mm, yes. Barring, um, either mental health issues that pop up or if I become super rich, then maybe not. But, uh, cause other than that, yes. Cause I love it. I've never s- stopped doing it. Whether it was, if I have shows that I'm acting on or whatever, it, to me, it's important to stay connected to the thing that brought me any other opportunities. So, um, where as, and it's also the only one that I truly am like, I love it and I would do it for free. Like I would never act for free. I wouldn't do voiceovers for free, right. but I would do stand up. I, and I do do stand up for free. So to me, it's always like the fundamentals of anything else. So if I like, I like acting, I like hosting, I like doing other stuff, but as long as I have to keep my fundamentals sharp and I have to keep my stand up short and keep my connection to real people sharp because I think that when you are on set a lot, it's easy to get caught up. Um, even if you know that it's bullshit, it's still um, alluring to get caught up in the with the like, oh, cut! You brilliant! You did a great job! Brilliant! Yeah. Wonderful! Yeah. No one's as funny as you. Right? You're amazing, and it's like, what? I don't. Yeah, that's happened with me with like, where people see something on TV or in a movie, they're like, so fucking funny, man. So it's like. It was all right, but it was not like watch me do stand up. I don't like yeah. where I'm in charge of everything. And, but I don't know. That's maybe not what you were talking about. No, it's. I mean, it was. It's a, in the same ballpark for sure. And the and I like that you said that because I agree with you that like people are like, oh, I like you, and when you're in this show or in this, and I was like, and it, it might be ego based, but I'm like. I like to show you my whole, if I can show you what I truly believe in, in my world and my belief in comedy and how I like comedy, which is usually sharp, but optimistic. um, That's what I'm good at. So come see me for an hour, letting you in about my life and what's going on. And, 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 and then you'll really see what I'm about. Like these other things are fun, but like, that's not me. Like, this is me. Right, exactly. Yeah, I mean, there is something. I mean, being a comic, you kind of get to do whatever you want to do mm-hmm. in, in many ways. That's also a very good point and the balance that is hard for me to deal with when I am on set and stuff is I got really, um, I found myself irritated in the beginning of having to tell someone that I was going to the bathroom, like having to be like 10-1. I'm like, no, I just go. And and I would get here, and I see this in other people. I'm able to do it. I, it's so weird to me when people are like, "I just can't do it." But like, I do get used to the like, okay, you know, your show's at eight. You be there by eight, as opposed to like you're going to be on set at like oh, two yeah, p.m. Yeah. So be here at seven. Be here at seven a.m. and then we'll break for breakfast and then yeah I know. yeah we might get oh we're not gonna get to you today. <laughs> it's like what the, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> I knew that when I when I was looking at the sheet, being like, there ain't no fucking, there's not that many hours in the day. I remember I did a movie and they put me on hold for a bunch of days, and I was like, this, I kind of got pissy. I was like, why am I being on hold? You know, this is inconvenient. Me, you're getting paid for every one of those days. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> put me on hold then. Yeah, there is the fun of that. Yeah, that's where I think the balance is. That's why I do commercials on occasion because yeah. I'm like, do I like having to hold a chip at the exact right angle and have someone come over five or six times because I didn't eat a chip the right way? <laughs> no, but do I like the check that they gave me very much? Yeah. So sell out. <laughs> hey, you said it, not me. I mean, I'm a firm believer. Look at my home. Um, 
I don't know what that even means, really. I mean, I know what selling out means for me. If it, if I were to do something that I don't truly believe in, then that's me selling out. But um, that's not a commercial. I certainly believe in commercials. I've seen them. Right. So I never. And I've had that before. That was a part. And I, I got over that real quick. I came up around a lot of people who were like, just stand up, stand up, stand up, always specialize in stand up. And that's all it is. And that's my focus. And I just like being a student of comedy, it was like none of my favorites that were ever like that. I love Robin Williams, who was in movies and cartoons and did all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And it, to me, it's always like silly when I hear people like that. And they're like, oh, be like, well, you know, be more specialized and be all about stand up like George Carlin or or Richard Pryor. And I'm like, what do you mean? Richard Pryor says on Sesame Street and the toy yeah. and all this other shit. I was on Sesame Street. You were on Sesame yes, Street, Todd? Yeah. Look it up. Google it. What year was this? Like, uh, I was, I did a film that was shown on Sesame Street, okay. but it was part of Sesame Street. Okay. Uh, yeah. Google like a, oh, is, is Hogan Googling it? He is Googling it. That's what he, that's what he does. He loves to Google. <laughs> uh, yeah. But did you meet Big Bird or Elmo? I didn't meet any, I didn't meet Cookie Monster. And they were totally unavailable to me. No, it's just, this guy was making a film for them. He asked me mm -hmm. to do it. I played the but number no. seven. Okay, so there was no actual Muppet or puppet. No, nah, I didn't get to meet any of the the, the stars that you've. Heard. Well, I kind of just wish you never told me about it. Now, <laughs> but I was still on Sesame Street. <laughs> so that is, I really was on Sesame Street. That's a good point. What do you feel about selling out, Todd? What does selling out mean to you? I have like my own personal uh, views of what I want to do and what I don't want to do, mm -hmm. but I don't. I mean, I'm always a little confused when someone is loaded does something kind of just like where you're like all right yeah you have 182 million dollars now you have 183 million dollars mm -hmm. <laughs> like yeah well you can you gonna get a good ipad now or something <laughs> <laughs> i don't know but i there's things i don't want to do but i you know i think people should do what they want to do and and it's hard for you know if you can make whatever amount of money for working a day why not do it yeah, I mean, again, as long as you're open to whatever you want to do, I find it fun. Yeah, if you're not hurting people. Yeah. Yeah. I do alcohol commercials, and I I, I can't even drink. It's fun. You can't drink? Mm-mm. Allergic. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Well, then you're a seller. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, I don't mind if other people drink. I'm not a morally opposed. <laughs> right, right. No, that's fine. I think you, you're fine there, yeah. Yeah. I've sold out at some points, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But then I realigned. Realigned. Mm hmm Yeah, it was a time period where I definitely was just, like, taking it. I mean, because it's an adjustment from going to, like, nobody wants me to work on anything, and I have yeah. to beg and jump right. through every hoop to someone giving me an offer. And yeah, I'm it's intoxicating to, be, to get an yeah. offer. Because I've done, like, indie films that are, like, why am I doing this? Oh, because they said, do you want to do this? Mm -hmm. I said, oh, yeah, you want me? I want you. Yeah. It was not, you know, things were like, I don't know if this is really good, but yeah. yeah. And I'm learning to say no to those things and the same in my dating in regular life. Where I'm like, oh, just because you like me doesn't mean I have to like you. Right. And I'm not used to that. I'm used to being like, oh, what? You like me? Okay. I'll give it a shot. Right. Why right, not? Right. You forget but, about yourself and yeah, your own feelings. Exactly. So I'm working on it. It's a big thing. That's why I went to Portland this weekend, had lunch with my friend Lauren. And that's what she, my big takeaway was that she she was just like, you got to have better self-esteem. You're amazing. And I was like, yeah, you're pretty oh, right. Yeah. That sounds like a good friend. It was a great friend. She really put me down and lifted me up at the same time. <laughs> you're a piece of shit, but you shouldn't feel that way about yourself. Yeah. Oh, no, it was just like, you put up with, it was more, you put up with a lot of shit. Why? And I'm right. like, huh, yeah, why? Yeah. Well, that's good. Mm -hmm. It's good to have someone you can just let it rip with. It really is. It was a big balance. Um, having someone who knew me, like, since I was two years in the comedy and, like, doesn't care about any of the stuff I've done or, or, or it don't do if i'm not successful or if i was successful yeah. she doesn't care she just likes me as a person yeah i like that do you have some friends like that um my friends only like me because i'm successful mm -hmm. no uh 
I mean, yeah, that's I have, what your internet persona would say. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> yeah, I have, I have some solid friends who I can confide in and mm-hmm. get messy with. You yeah. have friends from before you started comedy? Um, or are they all dead because of age? Because <laughs> yeah, they're <laughs> as a ninety-year-old, you know, I've lost a lot of my friends. <laughs> wow, I can't believe you said that. <laughs> um, I mean, most of my friends now are are comedians. Um, I don't really. I mean, there's people I've occasionally said hi f- from high school or whatever, but I don't. No, no active friends that I can think of. Mm. But I recommend it. Yeah, I know. I mean, I I do. I mean, my girlfriend's not a comedian. Uh, that's about it. I, there must be other people I know who are not comedians. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, it's pretty. Well, there's a lot of comedians. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. What's your friend Lauren do? Uh, she works in fashion. She like uh, is a. I think she works for Doc Martin. Or one a boot related place. I don't remember. I think it's Doc Martin. Did she hook yeah. you up? No, I never asked. No, I'm not a Doc Martin person. No. Not for me. And then when I saw him, it was, it was when I first moved to Oregon and I really associated them with like, I was like, oh, those are white people's shoes. Yeah, punk rock shoes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is my favorite part. Uh, <laughs> we kind of talked about goals um, But I usually do a full Specific question and asking about your goals That are beyond comedy As well like maybe Health goals or okay. um, Family stuff or things with your cat Or girlfriend um, what, are you, what are you hoping to Grow or change in the next couple of Years uh, I want to get I want to address Some certain psychological things Like uh a possible ADHD. Mm-hmm. I want to address that. I want to get healthier. I want to start, if I can, eating better, mm-hmm. which is so difficult. I know. It's the worst. It truly is. Um, I mean, I eat worse than some people, but way better than a lot of people who I, you know, on the road, I watch people eating like, oh my God, I would yeah. never have what you're having right now. But so, yeah, I mean, I want to exercise more. Is this the type of thing you're asking mm-hmm. about? Yeah. Truly. Exercise more, organize, declutter, things that I have find very challenging. Because mm-hmm. exercise. Because of the ADHD? Probably, yeah. I think so, Should yeah. I start there then. Yeah, I know. Have you been diagnosed or just a self-diagnosed? Uh, it's right. I went to a doctor, but I, I was, I, uh, he's a little like quick to, there's like one chat and he was writing, he started yeah. writing prescriptions. It was like, oh, yeah, well, it's this moving too fast for me. Yeah, well, do you think that's a him thing or a you thing? What do you mean? Maybe he just saw you. Well, there was something that he seemed shady, this guy. Okay. Um, Is this your regular? Position? No, no, this was someone I found and he had like a suspicious amount of positive reviews. Mm-hmm. I'm like, how do you have like 400 great reviews and every other psychiatrist is like a six? Mm-hmm. And I just think he, Ask people to write them or whatever. Yeah, yeah, fake. But I, there's someone else I'm trying to go to, and uh, there's other people I, I'm going to look into it. But I think that would be helpful to me. Okay. Seems like you could do, get this done quickly. <laughs> but I mean, I think the ADHD prevents me from addressing the ADHD. Yeah, that's a good point. That's pretty deep. It's like a very deep. What I just said. That's why Hogan's writing it down. <laughs> that's, right. that's that's our pull quote. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, do you want to plug your, your oh, yeah. thing again before I ask you my last question? Oh, you have one more question. Yeah, I won that at the end, but we used to do the plugs first. Uh, my special domestic short hairs on YouTube on the all thing on the all things comedy. See, nobody knows. Yeah, all things. Why am I blank? Yeah, all things comedy. Uh, youtube channel i'm on tour i'm playing a bunch of cities i got about like 25 shows scheduled you can go to toddberry.com my website's just recently been refreshed it's beautiful and sleek and yeah and then i'm on you know instagram and all that shit you remember when we went to london and you had shows oh. and i had shows and then we went and got gelato, gelato. in the rain i can't believe that we didn't bring i haven't brought that up because you was, bring it up all the time that was one of those things where like i like to find some real mundane thing and just beat it to death 
And I remember we just had this ongoing joke where we would, I think it, then I even like send you pictures of gelato shops I was mm -hmm. at. <laughs> yeah. And I don't remember, all I remember we had gelato and it was in the rain, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we had like Jamaican food. Mm -hmm. the, yeah. Yeah. And then I would just bring it up gelato and like that. There's no reason why I would bring up gelato. <laughs> I mean, truly was a lovely time for yeah. me. I enjoyed it. It was one of the first, if not the first time I performed outside of America. Yeah. So it was nice to know somebody that was there. And yeah, that is nice to have. Yeah. To cross paths with people on the road is great. Absolutely. It's one of my favorites. Okay. Last question I ask every time. It's just for a piece of advice, a little pearl of wisdom, a little nugget. Maybe your girlfriend gave it to you or your cat or maybe um, your psychiatrist before you decided that their diagnosis was faulty because you didn't want to hear it. Uh, who, uh, whatever it is, just something to help our getting better community to get better. Um, this sounds, maybe this isn't what you're looking for. This is advice I've given people and it sounds jokey, but I kind of mean it. Always go to the bathroom when you need to go to the bathroom. So that you don't end up with like just it's something that you could put off you'd be like ah, i'll just put off and then you're stuck on a bridge for three hours or something mm -hmm. that's probably not the deepest advice I've, you've had on this show but. no certainly not <laughs> <laughs> but on the spot i that's what i'm coming up what else um i mean general like it like whatever it's but whatever comes to your mind i think you know, the whole thing of like things are quite often not as bad as you think they are I don't know if that's like stoicism or whatever, but uh, oh man, I wish I would have prepared for this. I like this one. Keep going in this direction. Yeah, I mean, I think slow down, calm down. I mean, it's kind of easy to just tell someone to calm down. <laughs> like, no, I think it. I mean, you undercut in your own thing, yeah. but I I find it useful because I think. For me, that's one of my biggest issues is that I have, I think, not to give myself a compliment, I will say that as all, like, I think all of our minds are incredibly strong and incredibly capable of reshaping our perception and how we view things. And it can make you, if you're positive and have a positive mindset, it can make things easier for you to swim through obstacles. But if you have a negative mindset, it makes everything seem twice as hard and like almost sometimes impossible to deal with. And one of the greatest things I told myself was to come up with this mantra of um, nothing is as ever as as hard as I've made it out to be in my head. Yeah, I think that that's that's true for most things. Mm hmm. I mean, there's obviously horrible things that can happen. Yes. But yeah, quite often, you know, I think someone's mad at me and they're, they're like, address them. Like, Why do you think I'm mad at you? You know, just, so there's, there's things like that. Yeah. No, I get a lot of that. And it's just with the divorce where I just, I'm like, oh no, am I going to lose my house? Am I going to do this? What am I going to do? And I have to be like, just everything, nothing has you're here. You're fine. You're going to work every day. Some things will happen. I'm sure there'll be a bill you have to pay. But until there is, why do you why do you let your mind fulfill right. all these other things right. that are going to happen to you? Basically, so, you're going to be all right. Yeah, it's proven to be in the past. So I'm going to yeah. go off that history. Well, Tan. I like that you have a new special because I think you're one of the best comedians of oh, all time. Thank you. I think that I'm a fan of yours as well. And I've also said, I've watched you. I think the first time I watched you, I had said, I wouldn't want to go on after this dude. Oh, okay. I really, I'm not, because when you said that about me, I was like, oh, I think I said that about him. Yeah. Well, it's me. So let's never be on the same show together. I try not to, truly. <laughs> <laughs> So domestic short hair, check it out. Uh, all things comedy, YouTube, just YouTube and right top Barry domestic short hair. It doesn't yeah. really matter what channel it on. Yeah. It's not like a you'll find it. flipper. Just to, just do that, uh, and I'm sure you'll have a beautiful hour of comedy. I watched about 20 minutes of it so far while I was chasing my son around, um, and then had to switch it to songs that he likes, uh, which right now is Old Town Road by Lil Nas X. He's real into it. Mm -hmm. um, also, there's this. 
the toddler trap music we started to play with songs called um, um, I Love My Mom and My Dad Is The Best. Um, and those are fun, too. I like it. Um, so I recommend all those things. <laughs> <laughs> Check them out. Todd, thank you for being Thanks here. Thanks for having me. This was really cool. I enjoyed it. It was real fun to yeah. catch up with you. Yeah, man. Thank you guys for listening. Bye. If you enjoyed this episode, please check out our last episode right over here. Bam! Or perhaps a video picked by our overlords at YouTube. Boop. And don't forget to subscribe. Hit it up. Hit it up. Press the button. Press it!